Welcome to Plainfield Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of Plainfield, Illinois, and our worship service for Palm Sunday, March 28, 2021. We are led in worship today by our guest pastor, Rev. Joe Newton, and our liturgists, Linda and John. We're so glad that you have chosen to spend this part of your day with us. For more information on our church, you can visit us online at plainfielducc.org. Remember, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We hope our service is an enjoyable and uplifting part of your day. Welcome to Plainfield Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of Plainfield, Illinois, and our worship service for Palm Sunday, March 28, 2021. We are so glad that you have chosen to spend this time with us in worship today. We are led in our service by our guest pastor, Rev. Joe Newton, and our liturgists, Linda and John. We hope this service is an uplifting and enjoyable part of your day. Thank you. Something's running through me and I can't talk. <laughs> Thank you, God. Wow. Look around. Look around. We've made it so far. Let us be good and right and maintain it as we know that God calls us to be responsible people. It's easy to back off, but don't. Let us maintain this distance. Let us maintain the cleanliness. Let us maintain the breathing through these godforsaken masks that have, that have saved us. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Welcome to this Palm Sunday. Welcome, in the name of Jesus Christ, who walks with us and has walked with us this entire journey. Welcome to all who have been excited to come into this place to worship again. 
I only have one announcement. I'm sure you folks have others that we can add to the community. But according to Facebook, it is Sue Davis's 83rd birthday. And everybody else thinks that they're old. Come on now. <laughs> Blessings to you, my friend. God bless you. Are there other announcements that I am unaware of that we need to share with the community? Don't forget we meet here again next Sunday. Yes, to celebrate our, our Easter celebration. I hope everybody comes in their finery and wear their hats and whatever else, like it used to be like it used to be, and we could have an Easter parade. I know we can't have fellowship, but we could walk around outside or whatever. I'm only kidding, but I'm also serious. It is truly a joy to be here today. And let us start our worship with our call to worship, and we'll have Linda take care of that. Please join me in our call to worship. Come, come seeking words. Come, come to let, to your, let tongue your tongue give, give praise. praise. Come, come to find your voice. Come, come to, to hear, hear the, the response. response. Come, come to open your ears. Come to listen. Come, come to be healed by the silence. Come, come to, to stand, stand together. together. Come, come uh, to approach what words cannot describe. Come to, to find, find God. God. Please join me in unison with the opening prayer. Come, 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 come O Holy, Holy One. one. Come, come through the streets. streets. Come, come into, into the house. house. Come, come to find, find a space beside us at, at the table. table. Come, come to challenge our answers about, about why tragedy comes, why poverty increases, why we are afraid. Come, Come, O Holy, Holy One. One, speak to us in, in the silence, silence with, with wisdom greater than ours, with love deeper than ours, with, with change wider than, than ours. Come, O Holy, Holy One. One, fill, fill in, in these stories, stories with, with your, your wisdom, wisdom, with, with your, your love, love with your change, so that we might rely on your answers. Here and now. Amen.
Our next reading is the Palm Parade, Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. They were looking for answers, so they went to Jerusalem. They gathered in the streets to make a way for peace. On the other side of the city, there was another procession. Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea, rode into Jerusalem with an army of horses, armored soldiers, and waving banners. On the other side of the city, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus had sent two of his disciples to go into the village and find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. He instructed them, if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing, untying the colt? They replied with the answer Jesus had given, the Lord needs it, they said. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the street, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who needed answers, those who had come looking for peace, began shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The anointing comes from Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. They were looking for their own answers. They thought they knew how the world worked. While they worried, Jesus sat at the table in the house of Simon the leper. A woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. She did not reply. She continued with her task. She did what she could. She anointed his body beforehand for his burial. Jesus spoke where she did not. Truly, I tell you, he said, Whenever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of me. Come, kneel beside her. Do not speak, but remember what your hands have done to proclaim the good news. The Last Supper is from Mark chapter 14, verses 10 through 25. When Judas, Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. They didn't understand his way. They didn't understand all that he taught, but when it came time to share in the Passover feast, they turned to Jesus. On the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples asked, where do you want us to go and make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? 
So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and whenever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparation for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, surely not I. He said to them, those looking for answers, those who came looking for peace, it is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man, the human one, goes as it is written to him, but woe to that one by whom the human one is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Come, find your place at this table, you who need answers, you who came looking for peace. Come, <clears throat> come and find your place at the table, this table, our table. Come without answers, come without knowing peace, come without preparation. Come, come to find a place here. This is the table. Christ prepares for us. This is the feast God imagines. Here peace can be found in a simple meal. Please join me in our communion prayer. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks for the peace of God. It is right to give God thanks and praise in the streets, in our home, here beside this table. We give you thanks, O Holy One. We give you thanks for giving us a story, even when we do not understand its meaning, even when we doubt it happened this way, even when we want to rush ahead to the end. We know that you've given us this story, which to live and move and have our being. We remember that your story did not begin with this parade, but began when you came to move over the waters of creation. We remember the tragedies that came to your people. And we know that you were not silent. You gave your people a story. You gave your people a rainbow 
You gave your people a song. You gave your people peace. Gather here with us now, O Holy One. Speak to us through this bread and this cup. Remind us all the stories we've ever heard about you. These symbols with your peace, so that we might find your peace within ourselves. Just a little instruction, I'm going to put the elements on the table here, so I'm going to invite you to come individually, give yourself some space, and when you collect your communion, please take it to your seat, and then we will eat together. As we have just read the story of Jesus being in the upper room, and how was that he was with his disciples and knowing that there was something going on, but he knew what it was. So he's trying to tell his disciples the story of or how to live your life, knowing that he will no longer be with them in person, but would be with them in presence of the holy in our lives and in our work and all that we do. So he took the bread, breaking it, Reminding the disciples, again, that it is like our bodies that are broken. Whenever you eat of this bread, you will do so in remembrance of me. You will know what it is that I have suffered through. And you will honor me. At the end of the meal, he took the, took the wine and he blessed that. Again, acknowledging the fact that this is the blood of the new covenant. This is sacred. It is life-giving. It is in remembrance and in honor of the sins that have been given by me, Jesus. Whenever you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy One, we've gathered this day to share in this meal a remembrance, a remindful time in our lives that we come to know that you are so ever present. That when we eat of the bread and drink of the wine that we know that we are forgiven and we are loved and that we are to go into this world and share it with everyone that we meet. May this meal that yet is simple be so powerful that it encourages us to do unimaginably wonderful things. Bless this meal, O God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, there are no words to describe the mystery of this bread and cup. There are no sighs too deep to reveal what we feel in sharing in this feast. Thank you for gathering us together to remember that you are always present among us. We lift our hearts in prayer toward your spirit and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, Our story continues. The reading comes from Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 40, the garden. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. 
He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death, remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And Jesus said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray. He went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. They had no answers. Come, rest in the garden, you who are weary, you who don't have any answers. The Betrayal, Mark chapter 14, verses 40 through, 43 through 50. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. He was confident in his own answer. He thought he knew how this must end. So he had told the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, This one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. When he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. They had come looking for answers. They had come looking for peace. This wasn't the way. They didn't understand, and so they deserted him and fled. Come, run into your fears. You who need answers, you who come looking for peace. <clears throat> the Arrest, Mark chapter 14, verses 53 through 65. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. They did not have one answer. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah? the son of the blessed one? The chief priest, the elders, and the scribes knew their answer. They thought they knew the ways of God. They thought they knew all that God could do. There was nothing that could convince them otherwise. They spit on him and blindfolded him. They beat him for the words he said. Come, listen to what God might be saying. Listen to what God might be doing. That doesn't fit with everything that you have been taught about this world. Listen for God to speak. The denial is taken from Mark chapter 14 
verses 66 through 72. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. He answered, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them, but again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Come, join those who wander through courtyards, courtrooms, streets and gardens. Join the crowds who have come looking for answers, looking for peace. This is our invitation to generous giving. When you have no words, when you cannot find your voice, God approaches. Let us reach out to our God. Let us give our gifts. As always, you are invited to prepare your expression of gifts for God's blessing in your life. We invite you to use our electronic transfer of funds by visiting our website at plainfielducc.org or to use the Postal Service and mail your expression of thanksgiving to us at Plainfield Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, 24020 West Fraser Road, Plainfield, Illinois, 60586. Thank you. This is a dedication of our gifts. In oh, unison, please. O oh, Holy, Holy One, bless these gifts so that the world may know your love, even, even when, when we are, we are silent. silent. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Could this be any more joyful? <laughs> everybody back together. Not everybody. It's time to it's time to invite, encourage. We're safe. Let us share the love of Jesus Christ in ways that we've never done before. Let's just ask. Join us. I stand here in the midst of all of this as we bring this to each other. And we've missed doing this for a year, over a year. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a bur it's not a burden, but it is quite a bit of, of emotion that we have going on here right now. And we pray to God always, not just to lift it, but to listen. And we need to listen to God's response. So let us come before our God. Let us take again another moment of silence for our own prayers, and then we will close with our prayer together. Let us pray.
Oh God, we sit and we listen and we hear the, the emotion, the, the requests, the hopes, the dreams, our prayers, oh God, the prayers of your people, of our faith community, lifting them up to you, knowing that you are already, as we would say, on the job, doing what is necessary. We just need to look and watch and see how it's being done so that we can bring our hands in to help, to assist, because we take you as the leader. You are our God, and you will show us how to help, to encourage, to support, and you will intervene for those who think they don't know that you are available or you are around, for those who are in such pain and, and discord because of illnesses. We know you are there with the caregiver, with the doc, with the nurse, with us, as we hold all of these individuals, all of your children in our hearts and pray for the best, and pray for what is right. We know you hear us. We know that you will respond. Because you gave us, you gave us that son of yours, Jesus, who went into the world, as we heard the story today, that last week of his life, we hear the story again, and it's like we hear it the first time. It is a powerful story that reminds us of how we are loved and how human we are when we, when we want to rebuke, when we want to deny, when we want to be a Judas. Gracious God, we are awakened to what we need to do. From this story, from Jesus himself, who awakens us to walk into the world and share his love. We've been fed, we are, nur are nourished, and we are ready. So during this week of Holy Week, oh God, remind us again and again of this story that we live every day. Hear our prayers, oh God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Sean told me that I didn't have to do the Lord's Prayer at the end of the prayer again. He, I think he put money on it that I was going to do it a second time. <laughs> I win. This is something that I've wanted to do a long time. I'm going to invite you to stand. And if you've got a loved one with you, yeah, grab their hand. Please. And will you join with me in affirming our mission? We, the members and friends of Plainfield Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, see to embody and celebrate God's love by being a community that lives Christ's compassion and promotes justice, healing, and wholeness of life. A joyous family where all are welcome to join together to grow in faith and love. Amen. Yeah, please stand. We're getting ready for the benediction. I won't keep you standing too long. Will you join me in our benediction? Go into the world to find your voice. Go into the world to find each other. Go out into the world amazed, be amazed, knowing that God is always with you.